Hey guys, welcome to our fourth day of Chapel at Home, week of prayer edition with your good old pal, Pastor Link. I hope that you are all enjoying this week of prayer, and I also hope that this week of prayer has strengthened your relationship and trust in Jesus. Who remembers what I spoke of yesterday? I spoke of the prophet Jeremiah writing a letter to the Israelites who were in time in the land of Babylon. And remember, this letter was from Jesus. Do you remember what the letter says? Hmm, let me remember. The letter said that God knows the plans he has for the Israelites, the plans of hope and of a good future. This means that we don't have to worry about our future concerning the coronavirus pandemic because Jesus knows our future. God knows our future and he knows that there's a lot of good in our future. I have a question for you guys. How many of you guys know how to ice skate? Raise your hand so I can see. Are you, are you raising your hand back there? Okay. I love to ice skate. I think it's so much fun, but I am not a very good ice skater. I fall all the time. Have you ever realized that ice skating is like skating in water? If ice is a solid form of water, then technically ice skating means you're skating on water. Isn't that super cool? Today's story is found in Matthew chapter 14, and it's about Jesus walking on water. That's right, you heard that right. He walked on water. Man, what can't Jesus do? Jesus starts his day with some bad news. His cousin, John the Baptist, had died. So Jesus was sad, so he goes to spend some time alone in prayer with his heavenly Father. And a large crowd sees Jesus, and they run up to him, and they start bringing their sick to them. The Bible tells us that Jesus had compassion on them, and he spent the whole day healing the sick. Around evening time, when it's getting late, people start getting hungry. So Jesus feeds that large crowd with only five loaves of bread and two fish. He ends up multiplying five loaves and two fish so everyone can eat. Do you know how many people were there that day? The Bible tells us that Jesus fed 5,000 men. And this number does not include the women and the children. So in reality, Jesus probably fed more than 5,000. Jesus probably fed 10,000 people. And guess what? There was still leftover food. There were 12 baskets left over of food. After Jesus fed the people, he sends them home. Then he tells his followers to get inside the boat and head to the other side of the lake. Remember, Jesus needed to spend some solo time with his heavenly father in prayer. This shows us how important prayer is. If Jesus prayed a lot, it means that we need to pray a lot. Jesus' followers were having a hard time in the boat because there was a strong wind against them. They spent the whole night rowing the boat really hard. Early in the morning, around 6 a.m., Jesus sees his followers on the boat. So he walks towards them. And he walks on water. Remember, they were on a boat, so he walks on water. That's right, water, not ice like how we do in ice skating. No, he literally, he actually walked on water. Look at all the amazing things Jesus can do. He can walk on fire like he did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He can calm the wind like he did with his followers on the boat that day. He knows the good in your future. He can feed 5,000 people or more. And now he can walk on water. That's five crazy amazing things that Jesus can do. And if Jesus can do that, imagine what Jesus can do in your life. When Jesus' followers see him walking on water, they get scared because they think he is a ghost. <laughs> but Jesus tells them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter, one of Jesus' followers says, Jesus, if it's really you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus tells them, come. By telling Peter to come, walk on water, Jesus is inviting Peter to have extreme trust in him. Jesus is always inviting us to have an extreme trust in him. And today, he is inviting us to have that extreme trust in him. He is inviting you to have an extreme relationship with him. Peter is walking on water and he's walking towards Jesus. Can you imagine walking on water? I'm walking on Matthew 14 30 says, But when Peter saw the wind and the waves, he became afraid and began to sink. He shouted, Lord, save me! Everything is going well for Peter until he gets distracted by the winds and the waves. Once he takes his eyes off of Jesus, he starts to drown. And then with his last breath, he says, Lord, save me! There are two very important lessons we can learn here. 
The first one is that when we take our eyes off of Jesus and start looking at our problems, we start to drown in our problems. This is what happens to Peter. He stopped focusing on Jesus and instead started looking at the waves and the wind and he got distracted. He started looking at the problem and then he started to sink. When we look at our problems in life, that's when we start to sink. That's when we start to focus so much on them and that's when we get overwhelmed and that's why we start worrying a lot. But Jesus doesn't want us to look at our problems. Instead, he wants us to look at him, the person who can save us from all those problems. When we take our eyes off of Jesus and focus on the problem, we are showing Jesus that we don't trust him. And this is why we gotta always have our eyes on Jesus so we can always trust him. Remember, he's the only one that can save us from our problems. The second lesson we can learn here is that no matter when you say it, whenever you say, Jesus save me, he will always save you. That is a promise. This is the one prayer that Jesus always answers because he loves you so much. Whenever you feel like your problems are too big and you need help, you can literally shout or pray, Jesus, save me, and he will save you. Jesus loves you so much that he doesn't want you to focus on your problems, but to focus on him. Jesus loves you so much that whenever you say, Jesus, save me, he will always be there to save you. Right now, the whole world, everyone you know, is looking at the biggest problem it's facing right now. And that's the but Jesus doesn't want you to focus on that. He, instead, he wants you to focus on him, the person who has everything under control. Today, Jesus is inviting you to have an extreme relationship with him. Just like how he invited Peter to walk on water, Jesus is radically inviting you to walk on water with him. Do you wanna have an extreme relationship with Jesus? If you do, tell your parents, hey, mom, dad, Tell them, I want to have an extreme relationship with Jesus. Today, I want to accept this offer and give my life to Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day you've given us, Lord. Thank you because you always tell us to keep our eyes on you and not our problems. The person who can save us from all those problems. Thank you, Jesus, because whenever we say, Jesus, save me, we know that for sure that you will always save us. And thank you because you invite us to have a relationship with you. Lord, I ask that you help us accept your offer to have an extreme relationship with you. In your name I pray, amen. All right, guys, have a great day. See you tomorrow for our last day of week of prayer with your boy, Pastor Link. It's going to be awesome. I miss you guys. I want to see you all. I want to high-five all of you, but I can't, so virtual high-five it is. See ya!